In this series, I will be going through how to make a Spartan warrior. This is not for complete beginners, it's an intermediate tutorial. Check out my beginner series in the description for those that need to get used to the interface and the basics. I'll be using a sculpting and texture painting workflow. The end result will be a reasonably low poly character around two to 3,000 faces. In this particular episode, I will be setting up the character sheet and blocking out the basic shape ready for sculpting. So here I have the character sheet that I made. You can easily get character sheets from the internet if you don't want to draw one yourself. If you type in character turnaround, you'll get lots. Okay, so we'll start by getting our background images in. I'm just gonna get rid of the timeline. Press N to get up your toolbar and you'll find background images near the bottom there. Then add background image, add image, and then find your background image here. And of course it doesn't show up, so I need to press five on my numpad to go to orthographic and choose front view with one on the numpad. I am using the screencast keys down here, so you should see them turn up down there. I've got a front view and a right view, which I've drawn, and I'm going to line them up with my cube. So in order to move my background images, I can change them here and here, up and down. So I'll move that up, I'll press Z on the keyboard so I can go to wireframe mode, and that's wireframe down here, and I'll move him into position. So let's get him right in the middle. And you'll probably need to type in the values. And there we go, that's pretty much there. And I need to create a new one of these, so add image, and change this to front view, and the new image, change that to right view. And you can click on the double arrows here. Blender's already got the image loaded in. I don't need to go back to open. And then go to right view with three on the numpad. Then get your sheet into position. Now let's get back to front view quickly. I'm going to line up the top of the view piece to the top of the cube. So back over here to my background images. And that's the wrong image actually, so be careful of that. Make sure you've got the front view. Back to the front view, and let's pull him up. There we go, that's about right. Then we can go back to our right view, and press three on the numpad for right view. It can get a touch confusing moving these things around, but remember you're moving the background images, not the cube. And I need the top of the helmet to line up with the top of the cube. So let's move the image down. That looks fine. So let's check front view and side view. Just remember that you're not moving the box at any point, you've got to keep that still. And we can just look at the feet as well, make sure it's lining up in the front view and the side view. And it's looking fine. I've also got these lines here to help me. When I was drawing it out, I made sure I had the lines so it would line up when I brought it into the 3D program. Hopefully you found a good character sheet that does a similar job. You might even have back view and you can line that up in your characters as well. So I'll minimize these so they don't get in the way and get rid of the panel with N. So as I said at the start, I'm gonna follow a sculpting workflow because that's the style that I prefer to use. Of course, you could quite easily box model this as well. I just like to have the guide with the sculpt. It's the way I like to work. So I'll start off in front view and I'm going to block out the character and I'm only going to do one half and then I'm going to mirror it. And this is just so I can get a template ready for sculpting. So I'm going to delete the cube and I'm going to use metaballs because I find them a bit faster. Shift A to get to the add menu and metaballs are just there. So scale it to size. And I want to make sure it's in the middle of my scene. So press N on your keyboard and come up to the location, select all and press zero. Then I know the object center's right in the middle, so it'll be easy to mirror later. Shift D to duplicate. So Shift D, G to grab, and then S to scale. And I'm making lots of blobs. and just following my outline. It only has to be rough. When I model the hands, I'm not going to do lots of fingers. Then you can easily grab a shield or a spear or sword. I'm thinking spear. So we don't need a high poly mesh and we can use our normal map to guide us that we'll take from our sculpt. And of course the painting will give the 
illusion of fingers. I'll add this piece separately and I will add the shoulder plates separately as well. But I'll use the model and I'll extract it from the sculpt that I've done so I know that it follows the shape of the arms. I keep pressing D by accident which is display and it will get rid of your guidelines. Just press D again if you do that but I should be pressing shift D just makes things a bit more tricky to select if you aren't in that display mode. Okay so that's him in front view which is fine. Let's go to side view, 3 on the numpad, shift D to duplicate, G to grab and S to scale. And we're going to nip between front view and side view just so I can see how wide it needs to go and of course scale it down and up and out as you need. And let's just move these things into position. Gets a bit messy with lots of metaballs. So what I've done, I've gone for the wrong side to model really. I should have gone for the positive X side rather than the negative. So when I go to right view, I'd be able to see the arm, which is a bit silly of me. Not that it matters too much. It just means I need to go to wireframe occasionally to move the arm around and keep jumping from side view to front view to see which bits I'm moving. This bit's a touch fiddly, but it'll be much easier when you start sculpting. And remember, this only needs to be rough. So there we go, we've got our rough shape. So now we can select all, B to box select, and Alt C, create mesh from curves. And that's a quick way of converting your metaballs to a mesh. And there it is in edit mode. Back to front view. And I'm using the Auto Mirror plugin, which I think is really useful, so I'll explain how to install that. Go to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and then type in Mirror. And I'm pretty sure it's there as Auto Mirror. If not, I'll put the link in the description. But it is just a case of typing Auto Mirror into Google, and it'll be there for you. So OK, I want to go across the X-axis. So here's the Auto Mirror toolbar. It's in the Tools, and it appears just there. You don't even need to go into Edit Mode or anything like that and it will mirror around your center point. So if your center point is not in the middle, you need to go into edit mode, select all your mesh and move it into position. And make sure that center point is in the middle. So I want to mirror in the X axis, but I want to mirror from the negative to the positive. So negative, and it will go across to the positive. Press auto mirror, and there it is. It's created a mirror and it's created the modifier just there, you can see. What I'd do without the auto mirror is I'd have to bisect it and mirror it, but I don't have to with the auto mirror. And now it's almost ready for sculpting, we'll have to apply the mirror, but we'll start that in the next session. And there we have it, fairly well lined up. So in the next episode I'll be going through the actual sculpting, we'll be applying the mirror and going into sculpt mode, installing a few brushes, and having lots of fun. Thanks for watching.